Plainer Prod presents The Attic Monologues, episode 28, What's in a Name. There was once a girl who learned early how to lie. It had been built into her bones, constructed into an atlas weight her mother liked to call wings. This, her mother said as the feathers bit into skin, is everything you will ever be. This is the destiny I designed you for. You will be the best of us. You will be powerful. You will fix what is broken. She did not notice how her daughter bled beneath her touch. She did not notice eyes seeking for the window as if to snatch one last gasp of sky. She did not notice how the wings only weighed the girl closer to the earth. She did notice how the feathers turned sharp, how they tore into everything the girl touched. She saw friends and almost lover kept at a distance lest they learn to like the taste of blood. All she saw was a chessboard shattering, the chance to bind it back together. Love interests come in many shapes and sizes. Protagonists do too. It would be so easy to follow her instead of you. The things I could tell you about her. Every time she almost told you. Every time she almost showed you. The fate she has always known is hers that binds her into knots. Everything she would do to escape it. I wonder how much anyone knows this girl, let alone you. The heavier her wings, the more likely she is to explode. Fire does run in the family, after all. What are you doing here? Uh, Um, I'm here to see Raven. Raven, there's a child here to see you. I don't care. Raven, why is there a child here? Bella's almost the same age as you. In fact, I think she might even be older than you now. You are, in fact, the child. Oh good. It's one of your useless days. Why do I even bother? You, Bella. Why are you here? Where's your protagonist? Not, as I said, that I care. Uh, 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 Well, I... Agatha, this is Bella. Crow, my niece. Are you kidding me? No wonder the protagonist has no clue what's going on. You're all in on it. Raven, you're a disgusting influence. Me? I was gone 15 years, as everyone likes to keep reminding me. I had very little influence on and her yet upbringing. somehow she's almost your spitting image. Give her a spine and a Molotov cocktail and she'd be right at home. I guess I leave a lasting impression on the five-year-old mind. I'm my own person, you know. Oh, it's adorable that you think that. It's the Phoenix's world and we're all just living in it. Isn't that how the slogan goes? That is how protagonism tends to work. We're not having this discussion again. You're not a protagonist anymore. Move off the stage and let the audience leave. Some of us just want to find our family at the exits. You. Come inside or don't. Don't hang around in the hallway. I don't want to see any more of your narrative. Don't worry, darling. 
We're just heading out. Family bonding trip. Do you see how much I do not care? Tell me when you find a lead on something actually important. Ah, the delights of the found family. There's nothing quite like it, don't you think? Seems to be going well. All families hate each other just a little bit. Anyway, shall we go? Oh, I can't see the rest of your house. Gods, no. That's at least book three material. We have more important side quests to follow. What is the plan? We just said to meet you here. We're going to see your mother. N no. No? You haven't even heard the plan yet, little bird. It involves you and Mum, uh, so I'm assuming it's a terrible idea. You have no faith in me. We're just going to have a nice, civilised discussion about narrative roles and secrets Absolutely not. and damp. I can't. I, I, I don't want to do this. I won't. Oh dear. How terrible for you. Since you don't have a choice. Raven! When do children get over this tiring urge to argue with the things they can't control? Teenagers truly are the worst. You are only two years older than me now, and I do not agree to this. And yet, you are going to do it. I'm serious, Raven. She can't know. Raven. Raven! She can't know. If she finds out that this is happening, that I knew the whole time... She'll never let me out of Trinovantum again. And then she'll find Nyx and she'll twist, make all of this benefit her somehow. I, I can't. I, I can't. My sister is many things, but an idiot is not one of them. If she doesn't already know you are hiding something, she will soon. Besides, it's only polite for me to ask for her permission before kidnapping her spawn. Are you are kidnapping me? <laughs> not yet. <sighs> Do you ever get tired of sounding like a creepy old man? You should stop spending time with Athri. <laughs> I am allowed to hate you of my own accord. We've been over this, dear niece. You don't hate me. <sighs> Not yet. That's the spirit. Now let's go. Make a deal with me. A deal? Yes, a deal. Don't say anything to Mum. Give me a... A month. One month to figure things out. To tell Nix. To find a way out of this. To come up with a plan to take to the crow that isn't just lies. That's quite the ambitious request. But very well. I'll bite. And what would I receive in return for this ludicrous plan, oh dear niece? The author. I'll, I'll find them for you. Ha! You really are adorable. Were you not the one to point out my quest is nothing but a fool's errand? That the author hasn't been heard from in years? What precisely has changed since then? I can find them. It shouldn't even be hard. Nyx is the protagonist. They draw people towards them for the narrative. And the author... I, I don't know what role they have. But they have to have one, to be so involved. I mean, they sent Nyx a letter. They didn't do anything like that for you, or for Ambrose, did they? They also gave up on your narratives before they finished, but... It has to mean something important. That they'll be easier to find, or... I don't know. My point you is... You want to use your beloved as bait. Not bait. Just... It's going to happen eventually. Don't you feel it? We're hurtling towards this huge thing that none of us can see. It's got to involve the author. And at least... At least if I'm standing next to Nyx when it happens, if I'm pushing them in the right direction, maybe I can save them. I think you'll find that bro doesn't belong to you. Will you take the deal or not? Huh. Bella Blackwell. You're really far more ruthless than anyone gives you credit for. You really would make a good crow. I don't want to be ruthless, and I don't want to be the crow. But I am what this world made me. And what a thing it made you. I almost wish I could be there, 
to see you tear it all down. I don't resort to arson for every problem, unlike you. You say that like it's a bad thing. Well, dear niece, you have yourself a deal. You find the author for me, and I won't give my sister the tell-all scoop of the century. You have three weeks. Three? I asked for a month. I have waited over 15 years for this. I refuse to let the calendar turn again without my revenge. And besides, you really think this charade can last another whole month? I highly doubt I'll even have to hold up my end of this for long. Now, given that you have so ceremoniously ruined our plans for the day, what do you suggest we do with ourselves? I... I needed to go into the city anyway. Wonderful. I too have a few errands to run. None of which involve telling your secrets. Don't give me that look. Shall we meet for lunch in two hours? Only if you're paying. All of you do assume I have money. You do. You literally have so much money. You're paying. Welcome to the World of Wonders, where we provide exactly what it says on the sign. What can I get you today? Um, hi. Uh, Crow! Uh, hello! Uh, apologies, the shop is a bit of a mess. We're in the middle of a stock take. If, if I'd known you no, were coming, please, I would have... Really, uh, uh, no worries, please. And I've told you before, Mix Valentine, I'm not the Crow. Not yet. That's my mum. Please, just... Just call me Bella. Uh, of course. What can I do for you today? I, um... <laughs> you sold something to my... my friend. A friend. Recently. A, a radio. I'd like to know where it came from, or its power. I'd like to know how to find the people they hear on it. Oh, you know Nyx. <laughs> of course, they came in with Ambrose. Ugh, such a small world. Well, the whole point of the radio is to give you a preview of people you're already fated to meet. There's... Not much you can do to speed it up, but it is inevitable, or your money back. How can I figure out who the voices belong to? Uh, most of them will be strangers, uh, unless you know someone who could recognize the specific voice you're trying to identify. <sighs> so it's useless then? It's a magical item from the World of Wonders. Maybe if it had been created a thousand years ago it could tell the future in a more useful way, but any magic that powerful is long gone and any relics would be locked in the library, and I don't have to tell you. No, I, I forgot who I was speaking to. I apologize. You know more than anyone that there is no magic left for miracles. It's fine. I do. Can you... Can you at least tell me where you got the radio from? Uh, no, I can't. Can't? What do you mean, can't? As in you discovered it by accident, or it turned up magically on your doorstep. You don't know where it came from or who made it? As in, I cannot disclose my sources to you for their own safety. Me? You think I would do anything? I think you have a lot of power you've never tried to use. I think you could do anything, if you wanted to. I think that as a member of the Corvidae, you must remember that no one can trust you. I'm sorry, it's not personal, but I won't compromise my sources for anyone. You are one of the only two birds I've even let pass through the door in twenty years. I know you mean no harm, but I don't trust... this. Whatever is driving you right now, what you could do with it? Right. Yes. Of course. I'm sorry. It's all right. I don't envy you your possession. Now, is there anything else I can help you with? Any items I can procure? Oh, just something to rewrite time, or change memories, or change fate. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I know. Miracles in short supply.
Uh, I have to ask, is this... is this about the narrative? Uh, Crow, so sorry to disturb you, miss. It's just the Crow wishes to see you. Uh, miss? I heard you. I... yes. Okay. Tell her I'm just finishing a few tasks in the market. I'll be with her shortly. Very good, Crow. Um, Bella? Are, are you okay? Fine. I'm fine. Uh, thank you for your time, Mix Valentine. I greatly appreciate your hospitality. Uh, if you hear any news on the subject we discussed, would you contact me? Uh, of course. I hope... Um, I hope you find what you're looking for. I, I don't think you're the only one looking. People have been looking for years. I just have to be the first one to find it. Crow, your mother is in her office. She's waiting for you. Uh, thanks. Hey, Mum. You wanted to see me? Three hours ago. I'm sorry. I had... I was doing homework. Excuses. Oh. I'm sorry. So, uh, I have an essay due Friday. I really need to get started on And that. you're only um, starting it now? What is the point in going to university if you don't even care enough to start your assignments on time? What exactly are we paying for? I, I do care about uni. I'm just... I've been having a bad week. I've been... Busy with stuff. Stuff? Yes, stuff. My life can't be worked 24-7. I'm, I'm not a machine. Clearly. I'm trying. I really am. And you promised. You said I could finish uni. Then I'm yours. Then I'm yours. Then I'm yours. Then I'm I haven't forgotten how, I just... I want to speak in English today. No one actually speaks in Trinivi, Mum. It's a written code of five. It's not supposed to be verbal. It's got our lingua. It's not the language of magic. It's the language magical texts were written into to gatekeep knowledge. You can't just rewrite history like that. What are you accusing me of? I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just saying all these rituals you've made up to stop the magic fading... <sighs> Sorry, I... Uh, like I said, I've had a bad week. I've got to be sure I speak English so I don't accidentally use Trinivi outside the city. Just because magic hasn't always had a language doesn't mean it doesn't have one now. Generations of people writing all magical knowledge exclusively in Trinivi, it must have had some effect. Magic is ritual. ritual repetition, repetition, intent, want. I know. Do not mock me the lengths I go to in order to save us, Crow. I know, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. As to the reason I asked you here, I want you to entertain Raven for the rest of the day. He's hovering and I worry he'll get ideas if he hangs around too long. Hovering? W what did he want? Nothing, as usual. It's all just hot air when he speaks. Advice on what not to do without any supplemental suggestions. So, I need you to occupy him. I, uh, I have my essay. Take him to the library, if you have to. So long as he isn't setting fire to any of this city or talking to me, I couldn't care less what he gets up to. Yes, ma'am. Good girl. You can go.
Babysitting duty again. How the tables turn. Uh, yeah, whatever. Hey, Bella, do not let her get to you. She's a lost cause. Not worth arguing with. She's been this awful as long as I've been alive. Well, maybe she's gotten worse. It's hard to tell, really. She's trying her hardest to defend- No, she isn't. Say it again. Bella? Bella Blackwell? You are not the crow yet. You never have been. You chose Bella. You reclaimed Blackwell. No one can ever take either of them from you. Not even her. Bella Blackwell. That's right. It's a terrible name, mind you. Who chooses alliteration voluntarily? But it's yours. Thanks. Anyway, by the time your mother dies and you have to take on a role, I'll have burnt this whole establishment down, then you won't even have to worry about being a crow. Good luck with that. So, oh lovely niece, where are we going for you to complete your babysitting duties? Just the library, I suppose. Ooh, the library. I haven't been there in years. Uh, three knows your track record. I'll have to fight just to get you through the door. But there's something I need to check out. I'll have you know I'm a recovered arsonist. I haven't set fire to any books in years. Buildings, maybe. And the occasional court document or birth certificate, sure. But I have never harmed such as precious resources books. <laughs> Mind you, as we know, uh, Agatha's grammar is not the strongest, and some of her documents may have met premature immolation, <laughs> but I can't say that it was. Thank you so much for listening to The Attic Monologues. If you're enjoying our show, please consider supporting us through our Patreon or Ko-fi to help us compensate the hard work our team puts into every episode. You can find the links in the show notes below. Alternately, you can leave us a review, whisper to the wind, or tell enemies and love interests and friends alike to listen. This episode was written by Morgan Greensmith and produced by Morgan Greensmith, Ellen Clohesse, and Soren Briarwood. It was directed and script edited by Ellen Clohesse. The sound design is by Jura Leopold. And the theme tune was composed by Wilkie Morrison. In this episode, you had the voices of Alistair Stewart as the author, Bonnie Calderwood Aspinwall as Bella Crow, L. M. Clohessy as Agatha Cochrane, Lizzie Hyam as Regina Crow, Max Hertzfeld as Valentine, Drew Citrine as Raven, Anna Leclerc as the receptionist, Soren Brywood as Finder. The logo was designed by Soren Brywood. The social media is also run by Soren Brywood. You can find us on Twitter at Attic Monologues and on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook and TikTok at The Attic Monologues. For more information on our show, our crew, our policies and other shows made by our people, visit our website www.planarprod.com. Episode 29, Active Passive, will be out on Wednesday, December 20th. See you then! do we have i uh just tell me the last projections put us at 10 years but the earthquake last week five five years oh okay that's we can work with that my daughter will return to us within two years we always planned the timeline to be ready by then with every earthquake, we lose time. With respect, Crow, we may only end up with months. Maybe it's time to tell people what's really happening, how long they have left? Absolutely not. I have not worked my whole life only to be the reason this city falls apart. We simply need to accelerate certain aspects of the plan. Find the current protagonist. Everything after that will be easy.
For today's promo, I'm here to tell you about Tranthologies, a listless network show that involves many of the Atom Monologues folks, both as voices and creatives. Tranthologies, as you might infer from the title, is an anthology podcast written exclusively by trans people. Our stories range from silly to serious, from short to long, but every single one of them is incredibly trans. We release an episode every single day of Pride Month, with stories about trans kids swapping names, non-binary lesbian nights, spooky sea horror, queer retellings of classics, and a whole bunch of trans poetry. With 30 episodes by 23 different writers, you're bound to find something you like. We hope you tune in to join us in celebrating trans lives and trans stories. Trans love, trans joy, and trans power. Thanks for listening.